Hi, everyone. I'd like to start on the floor today. Welcome to live stream yoga at Wednesdays. I'm starting to give this a go on Wednesdays at 4.30, so welcome. Let's take our legs nice and wide. And it doesn't have to be far, just wherever it works for your body. And I'd like you to also sit on a blanket or a cushion if that helps your, your back be straight. I'm gonna get something for the sofa. So that you can see me in my dark clothing. Happy Wednesday, everyone. I'm going to take the legs just wide, and they'll take the inhale in the center, and then exhale around toward the toward one side and around the horizon, and then toward the other leg and up. And your animals love it when you do yoga. They'll come stand on you. And your dogs like it too. Inhaling up. Exhale around and down. So nice to just take, take a little time and carve it out for yourself here. So it's exhaling around the horizon and inhaling up. Good, and here we just want to flirt with our limits. So we're not pushing or striving. If anything hurts, stop, don't do it. Yeah? Inhaling and exhaling, and we yoke. Yoga, the word yoga means to yoke together. And here we are yoking together the movement with the breath, which in itself is a lovely meditation. Just that. Yeah. And then inhale, we'll pause at the center. And we go the second direction, inhaling in that center. Exhale toward the side. And around and down and up. And yoking together is also yoking body and spirit. And the, the word yoga, too, that yoking together is almost like that yoke where there's the ox and the cart. And in order for your life to go in a more harmonious path, the breath and the body, when they are yoked together, you can go in a, in a more integrated path. My teacher, who's in her 80s, she used to teach. I studied with her for 20 years. Her teacher is from India, and he is he's lived into his 90s. So this is called classical Ashtanga Yoga. Inhaling up still, exhaling around and down. Over that horizon. This is classical Ashtanga Yoga, and that just means it's really old. It's more gentle. It's what the yogis did, you know, sitting under the mango trees. Um, it's more of a moving meditation and very nourishing and very old. So tried and true. Let's take one leg in. So bend one knee and keep the other leg straight. Inhaling in the center. And we exhale around toward the bent knee. And toward that straight leg and up. And exhale. Lots of nice breath and movement. And this, in this rotation, we just, we, we move through several different, so many different stretches in this rotation so that we're not striving or reaching in one position, but rather just just sort of gliding over the surface. And when we don't push the body, often we find that the, our limits will start to open up for us. And if they don't, 
or aren't ready to yet, you just give them permission to when they're ready. So the yogis say we have lifetimes to get there. So just doing them, doing the yoga. What does my teacher say? If, if you work on yoga, yoga will work on you. That's from Baba Hari Das. Good. So we'll pause at the center. That's enough talking. Let's we'll get to the just the movement. But I like to give a little philosophy too. So we draw that straight leg in, bend the knee, and keep the other one long, and we'll inhale so that you can have that lovely exhale on the way over that bent knee, around the horizon and up, and around again. So it's nice to be with you all again. This helps me keep my practice fresh, a little more variety if I'm trying to share it with others. So thank you for joining. Hope you're all doing as well as, as well as can be in this moment. And gratitude to yourself for making some, some quiet space for just a sec. Good, inhaling still as you come up, exhaling around. Just this, if all you have time for is three minutes of this, or one minute of this, if you did that every day, it would add up to quite a lot of yoga. Good. Good, and let's draw both legs in for a comfortable seat. If it's more comfortable, you can keep the legs extended. Find a comfortable seat, whatever that is for you. And then let's take the shoulders. I'm just gonna roll the shoulders up and exhale around and down. Inhaling up. And exhale round and down. Good, keep going and I'm just going to see if I can Create a little more light with the camera. Get a little view of the sunnier side. You know that Billy Holiday song, Sunny Side of the Street. Good. So we are doing our shoulders good and then change directions when you're ready. Inhaling, the shoulders come up. And exhale, they come around and down. As they come down, you could say something to yourself like a mantra, like relax. When exhale. And uh, just lots of lovely breath on the movement. Make it delicious. Good. Good. So the body loves rotations. We talked about that last week. But in yoga, we repeat things a lot. We give the body some routine because that is a very traditional way of teaching. You do it over and over, and then you've got it in your toolbox. Yeah? So we practice the yoga when, when we come to class, and then we have it when we really need it. Yeah? You've got it in your bag of tricks. And so you can change the shoulder direction as many times or as often as you like. Good, and then take an out breath and just let it go. Let the shoulders come down and stay nice and low and relaxed. Just inhale and exhale there. Drawing the shoulders up with we'll squeeze, 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 squeeze up toward the ears. Wonderful. And then slowly let them down. Yeah. 
drawing them up again. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Good. And you let it down. Relax. Let the tips of the shoulder blades in the middle of the upper back there just be like teardrops or raindrops right down the back. Ha. Good. And then I'll inhale. So we have that lovely exhale to let the head come around and forward. Chin comes toward the chest and then up. And as we come up with the head, just keep the spine, the neck in neutral. So we don't want to, we don't want to, we want to keep the, the neck, the vertebrae and the neck safe. So we're not cocking the head back. We just bring the head straight up. And around and down comes the chin. Feel all those little stretches and up, inhale. If you hear a sort of, sort of a rice, you know, like a, when you put milk on your rice krispies that sometimes there's like a little crackling sensation in the neck and those are called crepitations. And it's just calcium uh, deposits in the neck area and that will with practice start to subside or reduce. Maybe not tomorrow, but over, over a good amount of time it'll start to become less and less. So that's normal. And again, if anything feels a twinge or doesn't feel good, you just don't do it and find what works, do something else. Inhale, the head comes up. Exhale, the head goes around the other direction. Exhaling, inhaling, it comes up. Exhale, around and down. Seeing what it's like to just slow yourself down. We all do a lot of, my teacher said, we all do a lot of uh, chasing the bus to try to catch the bus. So here we just, uh, my teacher would talk about how yoga is like getting on a train and you set your luggage down. You don't have to carry it the whole time on the ride. So our yoga is like getting on the train, you set down your luggage and you'll pick it up again later. But for now, you let it go and you set it down. Inhaling, the head comes up, exhale around and forward. Good, beautiful. And then the head comes up to stay up. Good. Good, now let's come to a cat cow. So I'm going to come to a Table pose, come to hands and knees with wrists under shoulders, knees under hips, uh-huh. And we'll just arch the back, so tip the tailbone up and the breastbone forward. I'm not very back bendy, so you'll have to follow my voice. Good, we reach uh, through the tailbone and the breastbone and then exhale, draw the navel toward the spine. Rounding the back. Good. And inhale. Tailbone up. Chest forward. Gaze up just a little bit. Uh-huh. And then rounding the back. Navel toward the spine. And let's take that a few rounds in your own breath pace, your own time. Inhaling and exhaling with the movement. Yeah, so good. So all of our bodies are different. We're still just playing with letting ourselves meet our body right where it's at. So it's not about what it looks like. It's about what it feels like. Make it delicious. Good. Good, and then I'm just going to come down into child's pose and relax. Take a moment and just breathe. You could stack your palms, rest the forehead on to the stacked palms and just breathe into the back body. Breathing into the kidneys. 
breathing into the adrenal glands that sit on top of the kidneys where our long-term energy is in that sort of abdom abdominal pelvic area. And since our breathing is a bit restricted in our child's pose, it sends the breath into the back body, which is, which is lovely. Good. And when you feel complete there, if you want, linger, you know, no one's going to come get you. <laughs> Not on the video. You can do whatever you want. And in any class, even in person, when we get there again sometime, down the way when things calm, you do what your body calls for before anything the teacher says. Yeah? So we're going to come to a squat and just roll through the balls of the feet. Uh-huh. Making sure your knees are happy. If they don't like this, you let it go. Rolling through. Good. So that gets into the calf muscles and it helps the Achilles tendon stay uh, lengthen and supple. Sometimes our hamstrings get tight when we have uh, tension in the body. So this whole piece here, just the, the lower the calf muscles, is also helping. It's all connected to the low back. It just helps everything loosen up. Good. Now I'm just going to come to my knees and stand on my knees, feeling free to grab a pillow or a blanket to place under the knees. You wanna be comfortable to stay here for a little while. Good, so I'm just, this is a camel pose dynamic flow. I'm gonna take my hands to the, to the chest and I breathe in and I breathe out there. Good. And then what I'll do is open the arms on a somewhat of a diagonal and lean back just slightly. Inhale. There. And exhale. You bring the, sh the hands back to the chest. Beautiful. Good. Now, other side will alternate sides. So inhale. Reach the hands at a diagonal. The bottom hand toward the, toward the ankle heel behind you. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out the camera and how you can see me. Good. And then exhale, the hands come back to the chest. Nice. So inhale, we'll alternate sides again. Leaning back slightly. Always comfortable. Collected. Lots of integrity in the pose. Exhale, come the hands back to the chest. Good. Alternate side, second side, leaning back toward the ankle with that lower hand. And the other arm raises toward the ceiling, toward the sky. Good. Hands to the chest. Exhale one more time each side. Your own, try, your own time and, and breath pace. Good. Um, second side when you get to the get to that point and back to center exhale hands to the chest good now some people can reach back and touch their heels quite readily and like I said I'm not very back bendy so um, I'm not uh, going to demonstrate that for you at least not today but I'm you know going to practice but some of you if you want to go back and uh, into the pose and you already know it you can do that but you do it only within your very comfortable limits. So that's the camel flow. Uh-huh. Good. Now, what I would like to do is take the, I'm going to curl the toes under, come into a squat, and again, roll through the feet. Good. And then we'll come to standing. Nice. Let me adjust the camera briefly here. Good. Good. And then before we come to standing, I would like to do, I did uh, just change my mind and you can do that. Let's come, we're still on our knees. Let's draw one foot to the side. 
Okay, we'll take our gate pose. So I'm gonna take the hand on the side, uh, the, the side where I'm standing on my knee. Got it. I'm gonna ra raise it to the ceiling and then arch just gently to the side toward that outstretched leg. Gate pose. And here we're stretching the meridian, that gallbladder meridian, which dissipates frustration and anger. So that is nice. Good. And then that hand comes down toward shoulder height and it counterbalances so that the body just floats back up. Good. Let's take that side one more time. Inhale, hand comes up like a Ferris wheel. Arch to the side, any amount. It doesn't need to look like much. And we just arch to the side. Good. Beautiful, everyone. And then the arm comes down, body floats to the center, up. Good. And then let's switch sides. So knees come to center. Shift the weight and bring the second side leg out long to the side. Good. And I'll take the hand on the side of the standing knee. Arm comes up in a circle, sort of arc. And then we arch to the side. Second side. Good. Doesn't matter which side you do because we'll get to both. Always take care of your body. Do what's sustainable. Good. So good. And then we draw ourselves up to center. Let that come down with the hand. We'll take it one more time on that side. I'm doing our slow-mo yoga. Up comes the hand. And arch to the side. And breathe into that side body, second side. Very nice. Yes, good. Hand comes down to the side and you float up. We bring this straight leg back to center and we can just draw ourselves up to standing however you like to do that. I like to roll through the feet and then stand up. Good. Good, and then the next thing I'd like to share is village exercises and their traditional village exercises from India. And what we'll do is we imagine picking up a bucket of water to our diagonal. So you reach across, you cross your midline, pick up a bucket and you place it behind you and release on the exhale, yeah? And we have an infinite number of buckets on both sides, so we cross the alternate way. Second side, pick up your bucket, inhale up toward the chest, exhale, you let the bucket go behind you, release, good. So let's take it again. Your bucket could be full of water if you want strength building and resistance in your imagination. Release, or it could have a feather in the bottom of the pail if you just want to flow. Picking up the second side pail, lift up to the chest, inhale. Good, exhale, you leave it behind, let it go. Beautiful. One more. Inhale up. Exhaling down behind and release. Reach down, and again, you can only reach down as far as your body wants today. And up toward the heart, and then you release it behind you and let it go. Good. And just notice how you feel. The second one is you draw in a boat. Traditionally, you're drawing in a fishnet, but a boat could be a more pleasant image. So you alternate the hand coming in front, inhale, and exhale it behind you. Inhale forward, exhale behind you, release. 
You could imagine a boat of your choice. It could be a, a beautiful canoe painted a color you love. Maybe a turquoise canoe with beautiful wooden seats or whatever you like. And imagine the water nice and smooth, so good. And you just let that boat glide on in towards you. Good, and you just match it to your breath. The hand comes forward, inhale, exhale, behind you. And so in both of these movements, we're getting a gentle twist. In the first one, we cross the midline, which is good for hooking up your right and left brain for clarity and integration. Good for academics or just feeling more centered. Good. So letting that go, let that just dissolve, let that image go. Good. And our next one, I'm going to reach up and imagine I'm pulling vines down like ivy from a tall trellis. So I, let's see if you can see me. I'm reaching up like this. Reach, 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 and then pull the vine down. Reach, inhale, toward the heart, and then exhale, you release it behind you. Good. Make sure you have water nearby if you want to have something to drink. You can always adjust whether you have the windows open or closed when you have your own studio at home, your own yoga retreat here. You can play with the, uh, the environment in a nice way. Have the lighting the way you want. Inhale, the hand comes up. Draw down the ivy and exhale, release behind you. Good. Good. Let it go. And let's all take a water break. Can I, can I just model having a nice moment for water? I'm going to get a drink of water and I'll be right back. Good. So just take a sip, take a moment. Good, nice. So that's the village exercises. You do the pails of water, the buckets of water and reach across. This is just a little review, cross the midline and you pick up the bucket toward the heart and release it behind you. The second one is the boat and you're drawing it in. Good. And the other is you get the high vines. I'm doing a plie here for you so you can see my arms. You, you keep your legs just straight. Just wanting to accommodate the camera. Good. See so that here you just get that reach through the side body as you reach up and up. Good. Very nice. Nice. And then... I would like to take this pose where we take a, a sort of a, a slightly wider stance with the legs and I'm going to take the, uh, this a bow and arrow stance. So I, I flex the wrist on an extended arm here, draw my, my bow back, my imaginary bow, and you aim, you sort of gaze over the fingertips and imagine your intention. You just sort of gaze over there. And then you, you sort of let the tension build on your inhale. And on the exhale, you can make a sound. It goes like this, bah! And you let your arrow go. And you imagine watching it go, uh-huh. Let's take it the other side. Make your bow and arrow, you draw it back, good. And you sort of wait till that tension naturally builds and then you just go bah, and let your arrow go. And apparently that, that sound is supposed to be a good release. 
of energy for the body. We'll take it again, second side, swoop the arms down, draw the bow. Good. The tension just naturally comes and then bah, watch it fly. Mm -hmm. Good. One more time, one more time, second side, draw it back. Uh-huh. Bah. Lovely. And so that one, my my yoga teacher would talk about if you're at a, you know, some kind of situation where you need a breather, you could go to the public restroom and do a couple of those. So, you know, she's she's joking and yet she's not. I've actually done it in a, you know, in a public sort of area around the corner somewhere and you can come out feeling refreshed or at least you'll be smiling and people will be wondering why, you know, so give it a try. She would talk about doing that at, at parties and right now we're sort of having our, our moment in a more, in a more uh, local place at home, but still, if you need a moment to yourself, which some of us do, uh, go to the bathroom, do a few of those. <sighs> you don't have to do it real loud. So give it a, give it a whirl. Um, so what I'd like to do is a sort of a one arm swim. Let's just bring the arm forward, swim it forward, round and back and forward. Getting the shoulder warmed up. Good. And we can take it the back direction, a little back stroke. Scooting the arm around. So nice. One more, good, and let's take second side, swim the arm forward. Oh, this is giving me a good idea. We'll do our uh, eagle pose next. Good, swim the arms for our one arm forward and then we'll take the back stroke with that arm. Good. You'd be surprised how much a simple movement can open up the body in ways because you're not tight. You know, you're like, oh, this is easy. And then the body goes, oh, good, I can relax. Aha. So you trick the body into opening up here. Good, let that go. And here's what I would like to do. I want you to cross one elbow over the other. You can place backs of the hands together or palms together like an angelfish. Uh-huh. Oh, this is going to be so nice. And so we lift the elbows up as much as feels comfortable. Draw, exhale, draw the hands away from the face. Yeah. And here we just sort of tuck the chin if you want. And this is the upper portion of the eagle pose, just getting into the space between the shoulder blades. So nice. If you want, you can make a small uh, fold in the thigh crease and fold slightly forward, just, just barely. And you just get into the low back there for a bonus. If you don't need that and you were happy before, just come back up. This one gets that low back, upper back, so good. Couple more breaths. Good, and then we start to press the feet into the floor to come on up, let the arms on unfurl, unravel here, the un uncross. Good. Good. And just see how that feels, inhaling, exhaling. Good. And then let's take, if you can remember which one you had on top, you reverse. You take the alternate elbow on top of the other one. And again, draw the hands together, whichever form works for you. And inhale, we draw the elbows up. Exhale, hands away from your face. And just breathe into the echo space between the shoulder blades. So, so necessary. We carry a lot of tension in that area. Good, and if you want, you can micro bend the knees and bend at the thigh crease forward any amount. My shoulders don't like it when I do that angel fish palms together. So I just put the backs of my hands together. It works for me. Another idea is to just hold your forearm with one hand and that'll take a little pressure off if you've got shoulders that need a rest. And it depends on the day. It depends on what your body wants in this moment. 
Mm -hmm. Good breathing there. A couple more breaths. Eagle pose. This is the upper body part of the eagle pose. Excellent. And then we press the feet into the earth, lifts the body, let the arms uncurl and come to your sides and let it go. Good. And notice how you feel. You can just pause and feel it for a sec. Let's take the hands up. We'll draw them up in a wide a wide shape with the arms and we come up with the arms. I'm going to bend the knees so you can see my hands. I'm gonna play with the camera as we go, but we're, we're all relaxed, we'll get there. I'm gonna pause the hands at the top of the head area and then exhale, let the hands come down through center. Down toward the pelvis and let go. Inhaling up, we'll take it again, centering breath. Inhale, the hands come up and pause. Exhaling, draw the hands down the midline, centering breath. Yes. Isn't that nice, yeah? Just that. Let's take a, a tassel twist. I'm just gonna let the arms swing to the sides and take a gentle twist. Start small, and then as the back starts to loosen and open, you can go further or not. Let the arms be heavy, let them tap your body. They sort of naturally tap the kidney area, which is supposed to be beneficial. Good. Yes. And then let your body rock you to a stop, rock you to center. Good. I'm gonna shake the hands, let them be kind of rubbery. Just let them wiggle and let some energy out of the hands. And then if you like, my belly dance teacher used to do this in Berkeley. She would just do, she's like, have a lovely tantrum. So just shake it out. Good, good. That's not an official yoga movement, but I thought I'd throw it in. Good, good. And then I'm just gonna roll the wrists, bring the hands out to your sides, extended arms and roll the wrists. Good, if you're using the computer a lot, to roll through that forearm stretch area and then we'll change directions with the uh, fists. Make those circles. Good. Good, and here's another one. I wanted to share. We'll take our we'll take our hands and clasp clasp them at the webbing of the fingers. Uh huh. And then we just go like this. Make a figure eight with the with the wrists. Uh huh. -huh. Yeah. That's what my salsa instructor says. I just integrated that. He always goes ah ha ha. Okay. Good. And then see if you can reverse. The figure eight, and so that's sort of a sort of a little coordination game you can play. Good. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then I'm going to take the hands and I'm going to make a sort of a figure eight, but around the torso area. So I'm going to sort of draw a lazy eight, so an eight kind of laying on its side, and I'm going to draw the hands clasped into that eight shape. Tracing an eight with the hands. There we go, that's a little better view. Sort of clasping and tracing that shape. This is again really good for integrating the right and left brain. Good for the shoulders, getting juicy. Nice. Good, and let that go, wiggle it out. Mm -hmm. And let's come back to the floor. And here I'd like to just lay on your back. 
and breathe for a sec. Take a breather, breathing into the belly. To ease any tension out of the uh, low back. Good, and then we'll breathe into the chest area to ease any tension out of the upper back. So using the breath here and the resistance of the floor to help expand into the front body with the breath. Breathing into the chest, feeling that opening into the back body. Good, and then let's take a figure four stretch. So I'm just gonna take my, say my left ankle and cross it over my right knee. And then that might be plenty of stretch right where you are and you just stay there. If you are bored there, you can draw the right knee up toward the right rib cage and clasp the hands behind the right thigh, if that's available, or you could just hold on to your sweatpants, whatever is reachable. I'm going to flex that left foot to protect the knee. Good. And draw the knee, right knee toward the right rib cage, and breathe into that left hip. Good. Feeling that opening, the breath goes to wherever you feel it. Remembering to flex that left foot, keep that knee happy. Good. Very nice. If you want, you can reach the right foot up toward the sky for a little hamstring stretch. You could reach the hands up toward the shin of that up of that extended leg. It's just a little extra bonus. If you were happy where you were, just go back to that. Good. You could, you could let the hand come toward the toes if that's reachable. If it's not, you just let it, forget it. Good. Good. And if you want, you could draw the head up to get a little more hamstring stretch. Only if you want it. Good. And then you let that go. Bend the right knee. Let that foot come down gently to the floor. Yes, and now leave the ankle crossed over the knee. Uh-huh. And here, I want you to put the arms out in a T position. Uh-huh. Inhale and exhale. Let the hips, that whole assembly, the knees rock toward the right. Let that foot touch the floor or you just let it pause wherever your body has a natural, uh, you know, pause. You don't have to go all the way over. And breathe into a gentle twist. Good. I'm really enjoying this. I, I think this is fun to do on Wednesdays. Inhaling and exhaling. Good, and then using the fingers toward the floor, sort of like you're playing a piano keyboard to help rock the body back to center, bring, bring that whole assembly back up. And take that left foot and replace that back onto the floor. Good. And then we'll take the second side. So this time, we'll take the right foot and cross that right ankle over the left knee with that knee bent foot on the floor on the left. Good, so we're doing another figure four stretch on the second side. Some people call it a pretzel stretch. So here you could either stay where you are or you can draw the left knee toward the left rib cage, clasp the hands behind the left thigh and just draw it in Remembering to flex the right, the right uh, foot, which protects the knee. Inhale, drawing it in. 
Exhale, you can release the stretch just a bit. Inhale, draw it in. And exhale, you let that release. You just kind of breathe it. Let it be dynamic and easygoing. Good. Breathe into that right hip. I can sure feel it. Yeah, good. And then if you want, you can extend the left leg up toward the sky comes the foot. You can reach toward the shin or towards the toes. You can lift the head or not. Whatever you like. These are all just options. And then you let that go. Bend the left knee. Let it gently come down to the floor. Keep the right ankle on the bent knee. Arms in a T position. And let's take ourselves, take that whole assembly, let it rock over toward the left. You can pick up your hip just slightly and draw it toward the midline so that you have that twist to the left. Good. And you can let that right foot come toward the floor, but it doesn't have to touch. And you just breathe into a gentle twist wherever you land. Breathing there. Good. Maybe one more breath. Good. Good, and then using the hands to press into the floor, the fingertips press to rock you back to center. You can take that little, the right foot off the knee and let it drift gently back to the floor. Good. And the hollow belly, just release there for a sec. Good. And here what I'd like to do is let you Bring your left arm up, so you bring it perpendicular to the floor. Uh-huh. And that means fingertips are toward the sky. Yes, and you just let the weight of the arm rest into the earth in this position. This is going to be such a nice one for the upper body here. So first you just let it rest there and that weight of the arm just releases into the floor. And so knees are bent, feet on the floor here. And then you take that arm and you reach up, fingertips reach toward the sky and the shoulder blade is lifted just slightly off of the mat. Inhale there, exhale, you let it come back down to the mat and the arm is still extended. Good, inhale, reach the fingertips up toward the sky. Shoulder blade comes off the floor a little, if that's available. And release down, back to letting that shoulder blade rest on the floor, fingers to the sky. Good, and we'll take it one more time. I haven't done this in forever, and this is so nice. Inhale, reach. Exhale, the shoulder blade reaches toward the floor and rests. Good. This time, I'm going to reach the fingertips toward the sky and then snuggle the arm bone back toward the shoulder socket and... I'm going to cross that arm over the midline any amount so that you get a little bit of traction there in the shoulder area. Good. Breathing there for a sec. So the arm is just at a diagonal uh, angle over the chest. Fingers still raised in the air. Good. And then I'm gonna relax, release the elbow, bend the elbow, reach over with my right arm and 
cup the right hand over the left shoulder. And from there, I'm going to rock the left shoulder toward my midline and then release it back down. Rock it toward the midline, shoulder comes toward the midline, just sort of rocking the shoulder back and forth gently. Toward the midline, inhale. Exhaling, let it release toward the floor again. Inhale, rock. Exhale, release. Good, and then the arms are crossed, the elbows are bent over the chest in a sort of lazy hug. Breathe there a sec, and then we let the arms just slither back onto the floor. Good. Second side, so this is my right arm is perpendicular to the floor. Good, and you just let the fingers be toward the sky and the weight of that whole arm just rests into the floor. Just let yourself breathe a few rounds of breath right there. This is a nice shoulder release. I had someone in my class once tell me that she had gone to physical therapy for some upper back and shoulder and neck tightness and that she wasn't uh, as satisfied with that as she was with this exercise, seemed to really open up what she needed. So both of those modalities are excellent, but it's just nice to know you can play and find what works for you. Inhale, let's reach the fingertips toward the sky and lifting that shoulder blade off the floor any amount, just slightly. And exhale, release that shoulder blade back to the floor. Inhale, reach. Exhaling, release that. Rest the shoulder blade on the floor. Inhale, reach. Exhale down with that shoulder blade. And again, we'll do it one more time. Inhale, reach. This time you snuggle the arm bone back toward the back toward the shoulder girdle, toward the that ball and socket joint. So you're nice and snuggled in and cozy in the shoulder before you cross that arm, keeping it straight, just cross it over your midline. Any amount, diagonal arm over the chest. And breathe, a little traction there, the shoulder. Good, bending that elbow, let it relax. Reach the left hand around the body so you can cup that right shoulder with the left hand. And then I just rock that right shoulder toward the midline, gently. And then you release it back down. Rock it towards your center. And release. One more. Inhale. Draw it to the center. Good. And let that release. And then you just let those elbows be relaxed, crossed over your shoulder or over your chest, rather. Breathe there. Good, and arms slither back onto the floor. And you just breathe in and out. Notice how you feel. Let's draw the knees to the chest. Inhale, knees come to the chest. You can clasp the hands over the knees or put one hand on each knee, whichever is accessible. Inhale, draw it in, exhale, you release that stretch, but keep the hands on the knees. Inhale, draw them in. Exhaling, release. One more, inhale, draw the knees in. 
Breath in, exhale, release that. You can take a happy baby pose where you let the knees come toward the chest and take the hands toward the outer or inner edge of the feet, the, the soles of the feet toward the sky, knees bent at somewhat of a right angle. And you just breathe there. You can rock side to side to massage the kidneys. Happy baby pose to close. Good. Good, and when you feel complete with that, you can release the hands from the feet, draw knees to the chest once more. Good. Let the feet gently come back to the floor. They find the floor. And here we could just take a few minutes of a Shavasana. You could let the legs just come long onto the floor. If, you're, if your low back is happier with knees bent, then let yourself do that. I'm gonna keep my knees bent, feet on the floor. And here we just take our favorite place, meditation. You just picture somewhere you've been before, or somewhere in your imagination that brings you joy. It could be a waterfall you've seen. It could be your, your grandma's kitchen. You know, it just could be anything. It could be somewhere you've been outdoors near some redwoods ocean. You just picture that scene and you just breathe and be there. Sort of like a yogi slideshow. You just picture something that you that you love. You can use it any time. It actually affects our physiology in a positive way to have that that positive memory or, or image to be able to go there when you want to. You can picture a beautiful flower or a nice garden you've been to. And just breathe. Releasing the jaws. Relax the throat. And the tongue is long and easy in the mouth. Eyes are soft. Letting the belly be like a silk cloth, like a silk scarf billowing in the breeze. And I'll let you continue to relax there. And even as we start to draw the practice to a close, just let yourself lay there for as long as you wish. Nice 15 minute Shavasana. If it turns into a nap, even better. So just letting the, the video come to a finish and you just let it go and you relax. You could lift your legs up onto the sofa if you like to have a a raised Maui pose or just stay in your Shavasana as you are. Breathing. Good, everyone. Thank you. That's class. Drawing my 
finish to the class and you just let my voice roll on by like a river. And may we live like the lotus at home in the muddy waters. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Ciao. 4.30 on a Wednesday. Have a good night, everyone. Love you all.